You'll be asleep before you know it. Good night, Billy. Good night. Billy's mother didn't know the real reason why he didn't want to go to bed. Right now, at this very moment, as you watch these light rays striking the magnified eye, similar tiny beams of light are entering your own eyes. And it's by our eyes that we are able to gain a great part of our knowledge. Nature has located the eye close to the brain so that its messages may arrive there quickly. Nature has also provided ample protection for this very delicate organ. Let us face, without panic, the reality of our time. Our cities are prime targets for atomic attack, but mass evacuation would be dangerous. An enemy would like nothing better than to have us leave our cities empty and unproductive. If an emergency should come, our factories will be battle stations. Its action is caused by two sets of delicate muscle fibers within the iris itself. These muscles are shown here in a simplified diagram. These spoke-like radial fibers pull the pupil open. This ring-shaped muscle around the pupil closes it. Sometimes we're afraid of big things. And sometimes we're afraid of very little ones. But you shouldn't be ashamed of being afraid of something dangerous. No matter whether it's big or little, being afraid is, is nature's way of reminding us that we should do something to avoid the danger. In this side view, we see the opening and closing of the pupil, so that we may more clearly understand another important part played by the iris. Whenever demanded by conditions, the lens acquires this peculiar bulge called lenticonus. This cone-shaped curve at first causes light rays to become distorted into aberrations upon the retina. As a result of these distortions, the pupil now contracts until the diffused rays have been shut away and only a clear image remains upon the retina. These interesting mechanics of the lens are not generally known, and the facts presented here have only recently been accepted by science. Our offices and homes will also be posts of duty, not to be deserted. With the knowledge of the first atomic explosions to guide us, our chances for survival will be far better than those of the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. If you live in a private home that is well built, the cellar is the safest place to be. The lower you get, the more barriers there are likely to be against blast, heat, and radioactivity. People caught in the open as far as two miles away suffered flash burns. Yet, protection could have been easily achieved. Here, a bridge post and rail shielded the surface behind it. Any solid material afforded similar protection. There's another thing you can do to help yourself get over a fear when there's no real danger, and that's to talk about your fear with somebody. Like we're doing now. That's right. But now there's something else about fear that I don't think you quite understand, Billy. What's that? Well, sometimes when you become afraid, there isn't anything that's really dangerous. Sometimes you think things are dangerous when they're not. Did it help Billy to talk over his fears with his mother? What do you think?